All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to um, Meerkat Associates Merchant Services webinar. Um, this is going to be a, an informative run through um, of how Merchant Services works, what it is, um, the industries and companies that um, are involved in the process uh, and the products available. A kind of Merchant Services 101. Um, so let's get cracking. So what is merchant services? First question. Uh, merchant services, it's a broad term um, that's used to describe a range of financial services for businesses. Uh, most generally, the services a business uses to accept and process payments. This is otherwise known as merchant processing. However, the term merchant services is also used to to encompass all the behind the scenes processes uh, by which a business accepts payments uh, and the companies that are involved in that process, uh, including the hardware uh, and the software <clears throat> that, uh, that is needed and used by, by merchants. So as a business owner, uh, it's essential that, that you build your understanding of merchant services so that you can choose the right solution for your business. So the parties involved in processing payments are listed below. The credit card associations or networks, these are uh, the common um, card types of Visa, MasterCard, American Express, um, there are or others, diners, JCB, um, but Visa, MasterCard are the, are the main uh, networks and obviously American Express slightly sits on its own. Um, well, well used by, by many customers. Uh, after that, we've got the, the cardholder banks. These are your, your customers' banks, um, NatWest, Citibank, Barclays, HSBC, etc. These are the banks that, uh, these are the names on your credit card and debit cards who issue those cards to your customers so they can access their funds. So after cardholder banks, we've got, we get slightly more behind the scenes in the process and we've got the acquiring banks. So what is an acquiring bank? It's essentially a financial institution rather than an actual bank but it plays a crucial role for the merchant by creating the merchant's bank account so when you process a payment with a debit or credit card it's the acquiring bank that will approve the sale the bank makes it makes the determination based on cardholders data as to whether there are enough funds in that in that account and will will make that transfer of funds. Uh, we've got credit card processors. So companies like Meerkat Associates um, who help and assist merchants setting up and managing their uh, merchant uh, services accounts and their card processing systems. And then at the bottom, we've got payment gateways which are the online gateways used for websites or online transactions. We're going to go into the virtual payment gateways in a bit more detail later on in the webinar. So we're now going to go on a little information journey uh, of a transaction. This should give you a, a bit more of an idea of of what information is passed from cardholders bank to acquiring bank to, from the merchant to the cardholder. So first stage of the process, customer comes into your shop or goes onto your website and uses a card to make payment. So that your terminal, your card terminal in site will be tapped um, or uh, not, not so much swiped anymore, but the, the card inserted and a, a pin entered. And the provider of that card, so the NatWest, HSBC, Citibank, 
um, institution will will send a request to the card network, for example, Visa. That request will go to the person's bank, which will hopefully authorize the transaction. Visa then sends the authorization back to the shop to, to say that there are sufficient funds in that account. The card reader will then uh, author, uh, request payment from, from the customer's bank through the, through the acquiring bank, uh, which is settled uh, through the Bank of England and will show up on the customer's bank account to say, or bank statement, say that payment has been made. Uh, the merchant will also receive uh, a, a statement of transactions for that day uh, of what payments have been uh, received by the, the merchant's bank. So there's quite a few processes in that, uh, or stages in that process, all, all of which absolutely vital uh, to the processing of, of that payment. So breaking that down a little further, we've got the authorization process, which is on the left of the screen, and the clearing and settlement process on the right. So when a cardholder presents their card, the information will go from the merchant to the acquiring bank to Visa to the cardholder's bank requesting authorization and that response will go all the way back again to the merchant. Now that process takes about half a second and once that authorization has been complete we move on to the clearing and settlement where it's the transactional data that is then passed from acquiring bank to visa to the cardholders bank and back again to the merchant. So the money will be removed from the cardholders bank taken through the acquiring bank to the merchant's bank. Now, the cardholder will then have to settle that payment if it's a credit card with their own bank, which is slightly separate to the merchant, um, the merchant's receiving of funds, um, but obviously completes the picture. I mean, in simplest terms, the transaction transactional flow is a journey um, from, from start to finish um, through approval and to, set, to settlement. Uh, and any time anyone buys anything uh, using a, a credit uh, or debit card, uh, it follows this stream. It, it does take seconds, but understanding what each of these stages is involved in each of these stages will give you an understanding of, of the fees involved and why why they're there on your statement. I mean, authorization process, um, anything from 0.2 uh, of, of a pence up, up to about 7p uh, for this process. Obviously with, with merchants that have high volume of uh, low value items, uh, um, such as a maybe a coffee shop that's selling uh, multiple tra multiple transactions at three or four pounds, they want the authorization process uh, fee to be as low as possible. Whereas those merchants that have uh, a lower volume of higher value transactions, the authorization fee isn't quite as, uh, as important as the actual percentage fee or the rate um, on each transaction. So understanding this, we can really nail down the, the contract that, that, that's put in front of you and get exactly the right, uh, the right uh, rates and fees for your particular business. So moving on from the actual journey of that transaction, we've got uh, the products. So as, as we mentioned above, much of your merchant processing will depend on how you actually accept payments, the types of payments you're accepting uh, and the provider that you're working with. So therefore we're, we're going to go on to what uh, the next part of what makes up merchant services, which are the tools uh, tools involved, the hardware and the software. 
So at the top of the screen there, we have uh, an image of a, a payment gateway. Uh, this is the software that works on your website or your e-commerce store and allows you to take and process secure credit card payments online. This payment gateway serves in place of a credit card terminal uh, in the process that we described above. We then move on to the actual physical terminals uh, in, in contrast to the, to the virtual terminal. This is a, a physical unit where cards are swiped or uh, inserted or um, tapped uh, to, to take payments. Uh, this device, the, the terminal, will connect to your merchant service provider uh, and facilitate the process uh, required for you to take, verify and receive payments. Uh, they come in a variety of sizes um, and, uh, and, and different functionalities. And again, we'll move on to the, the specific terminals uh, a bit later on. And then finally, we've got uh, the sort of all singing, all dancing point of sale or POS system. Uh, this typically consists of the software and the hardware uh, required to accept payments. Uh, it, it also can help manage a business's day-to-day -day sales and processes. Uh, such as sales reports, uh, tracking inventory or ma managing employees. Uh, it can reconcile tips and commissions, accept gift cards and, and all sorts. Uh, the image there shows a till draw at the bottom and a printer. Um, I mean, you can include weighing scales for a, for a grocer uh, in that and, and, and other uh, hardware options dependent on your requirements. So moving away from the actual hardware uh, and, and the, the software, let's go on to what actual fees are, are likely to be incurred on your, credit, on your merchant statement. Uh, account fees or analytics, um, th these are a, a monthly fee to service that account, uh, that merchant account. Um, it should allow you to view, or many allow you to view your transactions through a portal, and you can see the, the flow through that of, of money received. Um, these can range from a, th about £3.50 uh, is what we charge with, with our provider or acquirer, Elevon. Um, they can go up to sort of £20 depending on the complexity of your merchant account. A statement fee, uh, you shouldn't really need to be paying for statement fees. It's, it's, it's usually an option these days as to whether you want to pay for statement, but the statements uh, that, that you receive can and should all be encompassed into your account fees or the analytics. Um, so statement fee optional, but again, three, four, five pounds a month, depending on on the provider. Uh, PCI compliance or non-compliance, this is absolutely crucial that businesses understand what this is and how to manage it. Uh, PCI uh, DSS, its full name, stands for the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. Being compliant, there is a monthly fee ranging from £3.50 up to about £10. Uh, again, dependent on your merchant provider. Uh, Non-compliance, you're looking at a minimum of £25 a month up to 50, 100. We've seen nearly £500 uh, a month for the non-compliance. So what actually is it? The PCI is a set of requirements. Uh, it's intended to ensure that all companies that process, store or transmit credit card information maintain a secure environment. It was la launched in 2006 uh, to, to manage um, PCI security standards and improve account security throughout the entire process. Essentially, if you take card payments, by default, you store card data. You store the cardholder's name, the expiry date, the security codes, etc. And the PCI uh, compliance ensures that that is stored safely. Become compliant. 
All you need to do is answer a questionnaire once a year. Now, these will be sent to you by your provider uh, and failure to complete the questionnaire will result in you becoming non-compliant and your fees increasing. Uh, now, the reason this is so important uh, is, is because that charge can, can increase your merchant fees. Um, you know, as we said, anything from 250 quid a year up to the thousands. Keep, keep check of that on your bills, on your statements. Is there a non-compliance charge or is it PCI compliance in around 350 to five quid a month? Uh, chargebacks. Uh, so a chargeback is the return of funds to a customer. Uh, any customer who's used a card to pay for goods uh, for, for, from a business can use the chargeback system. It's not the same as a refund. Uh, a refund is where the merchant authorises the money to be returned. A chargeback is where the customer bypasses the merchant and goes straight to the merchant services company and asks for the money to forcibly be removed. Now, this there, there are only a few reasons why a chargeback would, would occur. Um, and they're usually around a, either a breakdown of communication between the customer and the business, or a refund has been rejected. The customer can then use the chargeback function. The, the chargeback function is verified by the bank. It can't just be used for a, a disgruntled customer or somebody wanting to have their money back. Uh, there, there is a, a process that, that goes through to verify that. Um, that money can be withdrawn. Um, I mean, fraudulent use of a customer's card uh, is probably uh, one of the most common reasons to dispute a card transaction. Uh, and fraudulent use of a card in this way can lead the cardholder to, to initiate uh, a refund of that purchase. Now, chargebacks are charged per chargeback and can are in and around £25 each. Um, as I said, there, there shouldn't be any reason for a customer to use that function, but it, it is there to protect the customers from, from merchants um, and you know, products being missold. So keep an eye on that on your statement as well. Uh, cancellation fees. Well, that's uh, simply if you want to cancel your merchant contract early, uh, there is usually a cancellation fee, um, like like most contracts, maybe in mobile phones or uh, telecoms. Um, if if you haven't come to the end of your contract, then the 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 merchant um, processor can can quite uh, quite happily um, charge that cancellation fee. Uh, terminal rentals. Uh, we're going to go on to terminals in a little bit, um, but this is the. The, the rental cost for having those machines. Um, they range from sort of 12, 12 pounds 50 uh, up to uh, about 35 pounds, uh, depending on the functionality and the tech in that terminal. Um, so um, that's all negotiated and, and agreed at the beginning of any contract. Uh, terminal rental contracts are, are usually a two year minimum um, and and go up to about four or five years. See, the, the, the longer the, the rental contract, the lower those monthly costs are. Uh, faster payments. Um, these are these are monthly fees and batch fees um, to to receive your funds faster. So for for Elevon, for our our uh, merchant provider, uh, we charge three pounds fifty a month for uh, next day payments and 30p per batch. Uh, this uh, ensures the money is in your account the next day. Uh, if, if you're um, not reliant on, on the, the cash flow on that speed, then it's a three-day process for, for Elevon. Uh, other providers, it can range up to about 10 days. Um, so again, something to look out for when, when uh, signing a contract is how long that those funds take to get through the process. And then the authorization fee, which we 
we talked about a bit earlier. Uh, it's the fee that pays for that authorization process. Um, 3p a transaction up to about 5p. Um, so yeah, worth worth knowing what that is if you have a high volume of transactions. Right, the hardware terminals. Now there are a few main players in the market in the UK. Um, up here we've got Spire, we've got Pax, and Ingenico. Uh, they all offer slightly different functionality, uh, but essentially you've got three different options. You can have a desktop terminal that is hardwired uh, to a desk, so good for you know a reception receptionists or somewhere that payments are made from from one standard location. Uh, you can have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices that uh, are commonly used in restaurants or uh, businesses where payments are taken in, a, in multiple locations within a site. Uh, and you've got mobile terminals that run from SIM cards, uh, taxi drivers, outdoor caterers, etc., cetera, uh, might be using mobile terminals. Um, all these providers will offer or do offer all of these different functionalities um, the the price varies on on which one you go for the mobile being the most expensive monthly uh, then the wi-fi and bluetooth slightly slightly less expensive and and the fixed de desktop terminal uh, would, would be the lowest cost so the different brands uh, in genico which is that one in the middle of your screen they are the uh, UK's biggest provider. They've been around about 35 years. Uh, very, very standard machine. You'll see them in most uh, merchant outlets. Um, compatible uh, with, you know, Apple Pay, Sam, um, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, as, as they all are these days. Um, but a very, a very good standard machine from a very well-established company. Uh, at the top of the screen, you've got Pax. Uh, relatively new to the to the UK, uh, originated in Hong Kong. Um, slightly fancier uh, machine than the Ingenico. Um, nice big uh, user interface there, um, and uh, and yeah, broadly similar functionality to the Ingenico. And then the Spire, which is on the right. Uh, again, thirty odd years experience. In, in the UK, um, so a well-established company, probably the, the, the slickest machines um, uh, and uh, have, again, large uh, colour screens. So, the, I mean, the choice of machine, you know, the one in the right there, bottom right-hand corner is a Spire. It's the mobile uh, unit uh, and, and has a very large touchscreen uh, interface. Um, the choice of terminal will depend on your business needs, uh, the look and aesthetics of the machine that you particularly want, and obviously the price. So we can drill down on those maybe uh, later if, uh, if, if you want to go have further discussions with, with us on, on terminal choice. At the bottom, we have the virtual terminals. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next slide, which goes into more details on e-commerce and virtual terminals. You can take, you can experience taking payments um, with with ease with uh, virtual terminals and e-commerce. Um, it allows you to take payments uh, online or over the phone, uh, on a on a smartphone, tablet, PC, uh, remotely, or a customer can use your website to enter their details and payments can be taken through there. So the options that, that we pr have available, there are three there, virtual terminals, e-commerce and virtual terminals, or mid or merchant ID only e-commerce. So the virtual terminal is, is, is a web-based payment. If you only need to take payments, the virtual terminal is the easiest option and simplest to use. Embedded logo in your analytics portal. 
Uh, virtual terminal allows you to process payments online or submit invoices with a payment link for your customers. This isn't customer facing, so this wouldn't sit on your website that customers would enter their details. This is on your computer. You take a phone call, somebody wants to make payment, you can tap their details in and take it through the virtual terminal, or you can raise an invoice through the virtual terminal and email it to the customer for payment that way. Um, below that, we have e-commerce and virtual terminal. It's a dual package managed through our gateway. Uh, you'll receive information for your web developers to integrate the e-commerce into your online shop. Uh, the virtual uh, plus the virtual terminal will allow you to to take payments. So that is more like uh, the, the online retailers. You, know, you pop uh, items into the basket and click checkout. It'll take you through the, the e-commerce and virtual terminal route. Now mid only uh, e-commerce. Uh, this would be through an, your existing gateway. If you currently have uh, an online store set up, then this merchant ID will allow you to take payments through that gateway. As long as the gateway is one of the, on the Elevons approved list, most of the main, most of them are, there's a list of about 35 the common gateways, include SagePay, WorldPay, PayPal, etc. But, but we can accept many, many more. So a few options for the online solution. So how can we help? How can Meerkat Associates help? We are uh, a one-stop shop, for your merchant needs. Uh, you'd have a dedicated account manager who would talk you through the process of setting up a merchant account or moving from an existing provider over to our provider, Elevon. Uh, we would also offer uh, ongoing support. Uh, if you ever came into any problems with your terminals or any problems with your statements, you can just call up your dedicated account manager and we can help you resolve those problems. Uh, we can offer help uh, and advice in choosing the right products uh, and terminal options for your specific business. As we've discussed, there are many products out there all offering slightly different solutions uh, and understanding that is, is crucial to get the best out of your merchant services. Uh, we offer industry leading rates on transactions, uh, processing fees and monthly costs. Uh, we have chosen Elevon as our provider because uh, they are uh, they do offer industry leading rates um, and allow us uh, our own portal to place contracts uh, and to to help set up merchants on their on their platform. Uh, and probably most importantly, we offer a free no obligation cost saving report against your current merchant provider. So we can analyze your bill and uh, put the, a standard monthly merchant statement through our analytics uh, and provide you with a, a comparison report that would show where we, we believe we can make you savings on your your merchant costs or improve your merchant setup. As I said, there's no obligation to con continue with uh, our recommendations, but it gives you market intelligence uh, to allow you to make sure that you're making the best decision for your business. So what, what next? Uh, if you are a current merchant with a, with a current merchant account, uh, you just need to submit a recent bill and we'll do that comparison report or we'll analyze it uh, and send a report back to you with with a, a savings figure hopefully uh, if you're new to merchant services then then we can walk you through the application process that that we've discussed um, it's fairly involved um, but but we'll be here throughout that to, to be the, the one person that you're talking to on that process, making it simple and easy and efficient. So any questions, please, please ask.
I must add that if you wanted to email me directly, then you can email savings at meerkatassociates.com uh, and I will pick that up and we can we can continue it from there.